Hi Eagles. So it is still science week and if you joined us yesterday we made a mad scientist or learned how to draw one. So today we're going to make some test tubes for our scientists to be working on their experiments. That way tomorrow you can combine your two skills together to create a mad science lab. All right so let's get started. I'm going to show you three different types of test tubes you could draw. Um, a test tube is all about using 3D or depth in your art. So it's creating different types of 3D shapes or what we call forms um, out of a 2D space or the paper. So to start, every test tube I make is going to start with what is called an ellipse. An ellipse is a, an oval or a flattened out circle. So I'm going to create an ellipse with another ellipse around it. And each test tube I draw is going to start the same way. All right, so this is the top of my test tube for my beaker. On the sides, I'm gonna make a straight line about three finger widths to four finger widths down my page. Now the bottom, I can get a little creative. So I can either take it straight down to make what looks like just a normal test tube, so something you would put liquid in to pour into something else, uh, or I can make it more of a cone or sphere shape, depending on what you're wanting to do. For my first one, I'm just going to go straight down. So I'm going to go straight down another few inches, as far as you want to go. And I'm going to slightly curve the bottom and connect it. Okay, That's a basic, very basic beaker. For my second one, I'm going to do the same thing to start. So I'm going to start with two ellipses, two lines about three to four finger widths in length on either side. Now this time I'm going to create a sphere shape at the bottom. So I'm going to very slightly curve each side and then turn it into more of a circle at the bottom like so. Now for my last one, instead of a circle or just a straight beaker, I'm going to make what looks like a pyramid shape or a cone shape. So for this one, I'm also starting with that same basic pattern. So two ellipses, one inside the other to make the mouth or the lip of my beaker. Two straight lines, about three to four fingers in length. And this time, I am making a line that goes straight out on either side. Oops, and I've run out of room. Let's hope you don't do that on yours, but if you do, it's okay. All right, so that's my basic beaker shape. Now, to make this look more three-dimensional, I'm going to add another ellipse on the inside of my beaker. That's gonna be the liquid. And you can decide where that liquid is as far as how full or not full your beakers are. Now, how big of an ellipse you make is going to decide the angle that the beaker is sitting at. Now they're looking a little more sciencey. And lastly, beakers tend to have measuring points, just like a measuring cup would have in your house if you're baking. And actually, baking and science are very, very similar. So to make that, I'm going to start by spacing some straight horizontal lines down the side of my beaker, and then I'm gonna put some shorter ones in between them. Now, you can actually use a measuring tool of some sort. You can measure this by doing finger widths apart, or if you're like me, you can eyeball it by doing top and bottom first, finding the center, and then making marks in between. It's totally up to you how you choose to measure your beakers or to create your measurement lines. Now, I'm drawing on a whiteboard today. If you were drawing with a pencil, I would suggest you also come in and create some shadows around the outside to make it look more three-dimensional. I can still do that with a marker but it's gonna look a little different. I'm gonna be using a technique called hatching, 
and hatching just creates shadows when you don't have a tool that you can use normal blending or normal shading which is known as blending so now i've created what looks like kind of shadows to show that it has depth and i can do the same thing inside my weaker or at the lip as well okay all right guys have fun making your beakers and tomorrow we'll talk a little bit about how to make your mad science lab